Hi, in this tutorial we are going to perform a synchronous HTTP request with React PHP. The main goal is to request several video files and download them asynchronously. Why asynchronously? Of course, we can start downloading files one by one synchronously, but it will take a lot of time since we need to wait for each request to be finished before we can start a new one. The larger the number of the request we are dealing with, the more this latency grows. We also can't perform any other operations until all files will be downloaded. In the asynchronous way, there is no need to wait until the last request is being finished. We can start processing results immediately when any request is done. So let's start. To make asynchronous HTTP requests, we need to pull a package called React PHP Bus. It is a promise based asynchronous HTTP client built on top of React PHP. So copy this line and paste here. I have an empty project and we are going to start from scratch. The package is installed. And where is a quick start example? Ok, here it is. Let's copy this. Create a new file. Require to load. Paste and input class here and here. Now let's run it and see what happens. It prints HTTP headers and HTML contents of the page. So what's going on here? We create a loop, then create a client. Method get means that we perform a get request to the specified URI. This method returns a promise. Once the request is done, the promise resolves with the response object. And we print headers and the response body. The client also has other methods for each HTTP verb. Head, post, put, delete and patch. But we don't need them in this tutorial. Now, as you can see, method getBody returns the whole response at once. It works well for web pages and small responses, but we are going to download video files. In this case, we should use streaming instead of keeping the whole thing in memory. Let's see how we can use streaming responses in the client. We call method with options and specify streaming equals true. Then the body of the response will be an instance of the readable stream, so we can listen to data events to process each chunk of received data. Let's try it. Place the constructor into parentheses, call with options, and provide an array with key streaming and value of true. Then replace this, get response body, and listen to its data event. When a new chunk arrives, we print it. Run the script and the same result as before. HTML contents of the page, some JavaScript code and HTML tags. But now we receive response in a streaming way. Now when we are familiar with the client and we know how it works, let's build a tool for asynchronous downloads. Start from scratch and create a new file. Let's call it downloader. It will be a wrapper for the client. We will make a request and then we are going to store a streaming response on disk. To be able to work with the file system asynchronously, we need to pull one more package called React PHP file system. Go to installation instructions, copy this line and paste it. Ok, once the package is installed, we can start. The constructor accepts a client, we will use it to make a synchronous HTTP request. An instance of the file system, this object will be responsible for asynchronous operations with the disk. And the last parameter is the directory, where we are going to store downloaded files. Import class names and initialize properties. Also, let's remove these dog blocks, we don't need them. And this empty line here in constructor. Now let's open our first script, remove this line and create an instance of downloader. Provide a client with a streaming option 
an instance of the file system and a directory for downloads. While we are here, let's create this folder and require downloader class. OK, we don't have any implementation yet, but let's imagine what kind of interface we want. For example, method download that accepts a string or an array of strings. Each string will be a URL for a file we want to download. Looks nice. And now we move back to class downloader and let's implement method download. Add some type hints and we are ready to go. So we loop through the past URLs and for each one we need to open a file on disk. Create a method. OK, first of all, we build a path to the required file, the directory for downloads and the file name with extension. To asynchronously open a file, we use file system object. Method file doesn't create any file on disk. We only create an object which represents a file. To actually create a file, we call method open. It accepts the same flags as native function fopen does. So CW means that we create a writable file. Things happen asynchronously and method open doesn't return a file. Instead, it returns a promise. Once the file is created, this promise resolves with an instance of this file. And we can continue with our main method. We open a file and the promise we receive resolves with an instance of the writable stream because we have opened a file in a writable mode. Now we have a file on disk and we can make HTTP request. Add a callback that accepts a response. Input class name. And I forgot to input a file into the callback. We have a streaming client. And once the request is done, we start receiving chunks of data. That means that method getBody now returns an instance of a readable stream. Well, we have a readable stream that represents a response. And we also have a writable stream that represents a file on disk. So we can pipe them together. And we are done. All data from the response will be piped to a file on disk. Once the response is done, the file on disk will be closed. Let's try it. Open a script and let's fix something. File system create requires an instance of the loop. Then provide some test data. I have three files here. Run the script and you can see that we have three downloaded files. Our code works. Let's check these files, open the folder and here they are, three files. Let's preview them. Nice, all files were correctly downloaded. But these nested callbacks don't look great. It's really hard to understand what's going on here. Let's see how can we improve this code and make it a bit cleaner. Now open React PHP site. Scroll down to Components. Here it is, Promise Stream. The missing link between Promise Land and Stream Land. What does it mean? Let's see. This library has a set of functions that can help you working with promises and streams. In our case, with the file system, we have a promise that resolves with a writable stream. And we need unwrap writable function. This function can be used to unwrap a promise which resolves with a writable stream interface. Exactly what we need. Go to installation section, copy this line. Then in PHP Storm I paste it and we have installed this package. Now we can clean up the code. Instead of returning a promise here, we wrap this call into unwrap writable function. 
From this moment this method doesn't return a promise, it returns a stream. It is not the same stream as we previously had. Unwrap writable returns a proxy for the future promise resolution. Once the given promise resolves, any data written to the proxy will be piped to the inner stream. And because we have a stream here, there is no need in callback. Just assign the stream to a variable. Then use this variable inside the closure. As a result, we have removed nested callbacks and the code looks cleaner. Now let's check that everything still works. Clear downloads folder and run the script. Works. We have three files here that were downloaded asynchronously. Let's check these files. Again, open downloads folder and preview them. The first, the second and the third file. So let's recap. We have used React PHP bus package to make asynchronous web requests. It is a promise-based HTTP client for React PHP. We have also used React PHP file system component to work with the file system asynchronously. And to transform a promise into a stream, we have used a function from promise stream component. It helped us to clean up the code and remove nested callbacks. That's it. Thanks for watching.